In this unique episode, I'm doing a one hour guided meditation to help you start to end self-criticism and start living into your purpose in this new decade. This is The Dr. K Show. I'm Dr. Karthik Ramanan. I help ambitious individuals end self-criticism with tools and strategies to create optimal everyday mental health. So if you're new here and you need to silence that negative voice in your head, get out of your own way and live the potential that you know you have, well, I am here for you. I encourage you to subscribe right now. Let's get on with the meditation. Find a comfortable place to sit. Sit with your back straight, your neck straight as well. And close your eyes. For the duration of the meditation, breathe from your belly. How can you tell that you're breathing from your belly and not your chest? You can place your hands on your belly and observe whether they are extending or withdrawing into your torso. If they are not, you may be breathing from your chest. When we breathe from our chest, we don't take in as much oxygen, as much air. We don't expel as much carbon dioxide. But when we breathe from our belly with our full diaphragm, deep breaths in and out, we nourish every cell in our body. So for the rest of this meditation, Breathe from your belly. Five to six seconds in. And five to six seconds out. Let's practice. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Breathe in. And breathe out. If your breathing deviates from this pattern, it's okay. Just return as soon as you notice. And if your mind deviates from that upon which you are focusing, it's okay. Return your thoughts back. Focus your mind once again. See, there's no wrong way to meditate. However you do it is just right. Let's take a moment to reflect on 2019.
What were some of the high points? What were some of the great things that took place that you can think about, be grateful for? parts of your personal life what parts of your professional life what went well this year see even in our darkest days There are still moments that we can look back upon. Maybe smile a little. What were those moments for you in 2019? Reflect upon those moments that made you smile. Those moments where it felt so great to be alive. Those moments where you felt most like your true self. Now, 2019 may have also been difficult for you at times. What were those times that really tested you? may not always seem obvious as the difficult times unfold, but in hindsight, often we can reframe, often we can create positive meaning. It's not simply about finding silver linings. It's about understanding that our most challenging times are the times from which we grow. It is our struggles that truly shape us into who we are. Maybe you had those kinds of moments in 2019. The only tragedy is to not learn from them. How can you grow How can you serve others because of what you have learned? What has your pain allowed you to do that you could not have done otherwise?
What has your pain allowed you to do? Who has your pain allowed you to become? That you would not have been otherwise. In this, we can find gratitude. As you embark into 2020, what is one word that you want this year to be about? If you could do one thing this year that would make yourself proud, what would it be? Sometimes we set lofty expectations for ourselves and when we don't follow through, we get down upon ourselves. The voice in our head starts talking. It starts talking about how stupid we are, how incapable we are, how worthless we are. But what if in 2020, this was the year that voice loses its power and allows you to become the person that you know you were meant to be? What if this was the year that you set a goal and you met it. Or, what if this is the year that you set a goal and you did not meet that goal, but you were kind to yourself because you still made progress? What if this is the year that you recognize that progress is more important than perfection? What if 2020 was the greatest year of your life? Not because of the things that happen, but because you take charge of your focus, of your health, your psychology. And you become one step closer to the person you were born to be. Is it possible? Is it possible that one year from now you could reflect upon 2020 and hardly recognize yourself. For you have grown, you have prospered, you have flourished.
you have silenced the negative voice in your head. You have reclaimed your power. Take a moment to imagine that it is one year from now and you are standing in front of your mirror. And you see the person in the mirror. You love this person. You love yourself. How does this feel? This is somebody who not only met their goal, exceeded it. And there were other goals that you did not achieve, but you made progress. And you don't beat yourself up for those things anymore. What does your smile look like in the mirror? How are your shoulders? Are they drooping forward? Are they back upright? In the mirror, is your neck leaning forward or is it upright? As you look in the mirror, what does your body look like? Not just lean, fit, whatever your goals may be in those realms. How vibrant does your body look? How clear is your skin? How do your eyes sparkle? How does it feel to love yourself once again? This is your future if you choose to live into this vision. You see, we often live in our present moment, in our circumstances. Or we live a reflection of a past long gone reliving our tragedies over and over. But instead, what if we lived into the vision of who we can be? What if we saw our past as simply lessons to learn rather than reasons for which we are broken? What if our present was not a burden, but an opportunity? What if our future was a canvas that we could paint entirely within our grasp?
What if you knew, without any question, that you have everything you could possibly have, that you are the person that you need to be to live into that future? We all have the ability to grow. It's how we choose to harness the time, the opportunities that are given to us. Our diagnosis is not our destiny. Our past is not our future. Our present is truly a blessing. To have the legs, the arms, the strength, the health, the focus, the thought, the breath, have everything we need. You have everything you need. You are everything you need. Take a moment to do a body scan. Start with your toes. Send your mind's eye to your toes and observe what do they feel? How are they positioned? The bottom of your feet, your heel, your ankles. What do you notice in your feet? Let's move up to your calves. Notice any tightness. Notice any sensations up to your knees. Take a moment to feel gratitude for your knees and ankles, your feet. Your thighs, your legs. For allowing you to move from place to place. It's too easy to forget how blessed we are to simply be able to move until maybe we're injured and we can't. Why not be grateful now? Focus on our ability to move, to squat, to walk, to run.
Send your mind's eye upward, your abdomen, your lower back. Your core gives you strength to do everything else. Your digestion is the key to your health, to your mental health, your physical health. Find a moment to be grateful for all the magical processes that take place in your abdomen. kidneys, your liver, your intestines, your reproductive organs, everything. Thank them for tirelessly doing their job. up to your chest, let's pay attention to our lungs once again, as we breathe in for five to six seconds, breathe out five to six seconds. Thank you, lungs. We breathe in the oxygen. It keeps every cell in our body alive. We exhale the carbon dioxide that no longer serves us. And our lungs allow that to happen. Our breathing allows us to control our stress, our worry. Mastering our breath allows us to master our life. And now to the heart. Wonderful heart. From the moment you were born, and even before, this heart has pumped for you. Even when you were tired, even when you were sleeping, even when you were exhausted, even when you were depressed, even when you wanted to quit, your heart did not. Your heart has continued to work, sending oxygen in the blood, the nutrients in the blood to every cell in your body. has tirelessly worked for you and has loved you all along. Your heart knows no self-criticism. Your heart only has love for you. Thank you, heart. 
send your mind's eye to your shoulders, your arms, elbows, wrists, hands and fingers. Think of all the work that you are able to do with your hands. The typing, the writing, even holding your phone. How about feeding yourself, cleaning yourself? because of these incredible upper limbs and hands and fingers that we have. So much dexterity, so much possibility in the power of these hands. Give yourself a moment of gratitude for your hands, for your wrists, your forearms, elbows, upper arms, shoulders. So we move up to the neck that holds up your head. So much vital strength flows through that neck. Blood. spinal cord communicating with the rest of your body the health of your neck allows you to do everything else and now your head Take a moment to observe the muscles in your face. How do they feel in this moment? Where do you notice any tension? Feel free to release that tension. Notice the air go in through your nose and out. Notice how your tongue sits in your mouth. Notice how your eyelids lay peacefully upon each other. How grateful are you for your eyes, your vision, your sense of taste, smell, your ears and your hearing, touch. These senses that we have, that we take for granted, truly magical. Now let's reflect inward to our brain. This magnificent brain we have. It's tuned so well to keep us alive, keep us safe.
It is the master of noticing patterns, and creating meaning from those patterns. It is incredibly powerful at creating change for us. This brain is truly the answer to everything we seek in life. And your brain is perfect just the way it is. mind, your body, every organ, every cell, you are perfect just the way you are. Can we improve? Of course. Can we learn and grow? Absolutely. Are we our ideal self right now? Perhaps not. Yet, you are enough. You are good enough. You are brave enough. You are courageous enough. You are beautiful enough, handsome enough. You are smart enough. You are educated enough. You are enough just the way you are. You are perfect just the way you are. Awesome, we can flourish. Take a moment to acknowledge I am enough. I am enough. In 2020, what if you adopted the belief that you are enough? Would you be able to work towards your goals? Meet those goals? Exceed those goals? See, everything is possible. We must first know that we are capable. The easiest way to know we are capable is to recognize how we have gotten here, the things we take for granted, our bodies, our minds, the people around us. Our past, our present. 
present circumstances. And then, once we have that gratitude, we look forward. one year into the future, standing in front of that mirror, as someone who has taken action, accomplished those goals, and grown, grown into the person that you can be, grown into the person you wish to be, grown into the person that you actually already are. Twenty twenty can be a year of growth, a year of gratitude, a year of consistency. Year of discipline, a year of dedication, a year of love, a year of self compassion. If you choose to focus on that which you can control, reframe the negatives into positives. and find gratitude in every situation and every moment. And when you fail, it's okay. You simply get up, pick yourself up, and you do it again. In 2020, if you are to release self-criticism, what will it take? If you wish to have powerful everyday mental health, What must you do? Who must you be in each moment? Take a moment and think about how you would like to transform your psychology, the way you think, the relationship you have with yourself. If you are the master of your own thoughts, what would that look like? What will it take to create that person, that state within yourself? Commit to it right now with all of your emotions. Decide that you will do whatever it takes to master your mind 
and your relationship with yourself. Your relationships with others. What goals do you have in 2020 to improve your relationships with others? Maybe it's bettering your romantic relationship. It's improving your relationships with a parent or child. Maybe this is the year that you forgive. Forgive that person over whom You've had negative emotions for years. Maybe this is the year that you forgive and free yourself. Take a moment to reflect upon how and with whom you wish to improve these relationships. What will it take to make this happen? Commit to yourself in this moment with all your emotions that you will improve your relationships in this way. To become the person that you know you are meant to be. In 2020, how will you improve your nutrition? How will you shift your relationship with food? How will you incorporate more whole plants into your meals? How can you become somebody who loves the power of vegetables, fruits, nuts, beans, and seeds? What will it take to master your microbiome and your gut so that you no longer crave that which does not serve you? And if you do indulge, you're okay with that. And you go right back to living your optimal, nutritious life. What if you shifted your relationship with food 
so that you no longer eat out of stress, out of sadness, out of social obligation. What if food was simply nourishment? Take a moment to think about what it will take for you to feed yourself the best way possible in 2020. In 2020, what if you were to master your sleep? What if you could fall asleep every night without issue? What if you could wake up each morning with full energy and passion? What if you woke up refreshed? What if you had energy throughout the whole day? What if you shed this idea that working hard means sleeping less? What if you adopted the idea That excellent sleep leads to an excellent life. If your present circumstances do not allow you to have a good night's sleep, what if this is the year that you created the circumstances to give you a good night's sleep. Maybe it's a new job. Maybe it's an agreement with your family. Maybe it's a contract with yourself. Think about what it would take to sleep this year. Reflect upon your ideal self. Prioritizing sleep. What would you need to do in 2020 to move your body more? To pump blood and nutrients to every tissue and cell? To rejuvenate your mind, energize your feelings, your emotions, Strengthen your body, your muscles, your ligaments, your tendons, your bones, so that you can stand taller, run further, lift more, live more. What can you do this year in 2020 to take your fitness to the next level? What would you need to do?
take a moment and reflect on what you will do in this coming year to prioritize your physical health. May 2020 be the year that you optimize the five pillars of everyday mental health so that you can silence that negative voice in your head end self-criticism and become the person you were born to be the person you already are deep inside What would it mean to you? What would it mean to the loved ones around you? If you live into this person, live into this vision of your ideal self. You have the capability. You are worthy. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to be healthy. You are enough. What if we are the only thing standing in our own way? What if we could step aside to allow ourselves to grow? What if we decided in this moment that we are committed to doing whatever it takes? Will you do whatever it takes? Are you tired of being where you are? Does it hurt enough? Is enough truly enough? Because you can choose right now with all the emotions in your mind, in your body, that this is the time. I am worthy. I am enough. And I will do whatever it takes to find true health true fulfillment, true purpose in life. Twenty twenty is a new beginning. become the person you always were inside, to live the potential that you know you have, to live your greatness. Twenty twenty. 
this year? What do you choose to make of it? What do you choose to make of the time that you have? Decide. And when you are ready, you may open your eyes. I believe in your greatness.